Thanks, Colin. Colin reading from the book of James. We're still in that book of James, chapter 3, verses 1 to 12. And it usually has the heading, Taming the Tongue. And the tongue there is used as as a metaphor for the things that we speak. Not just what we say, but when we say it and how we say it as well. Not just what we say, but when we say it and how we say it. I mean, I could, for instance, if you say, Gav, I love you, I could say, yeah, I love you too. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Depends how we say it, right? <laughs> Makes a difference. So it's not just what we say, but how we say it and when, the timing. Now, it wasn't until I was about 50 years old that I was diagnosed with ADHD. Now, it seems like a very common thing these days to be diagnosed with ADHD as adults. And the experts say we've got this kind of glut of people coming through. And they reckon that something between 1% and 5% of the population struggle with attention deficit hyper, hyperactivity disorder. It's a condition. And when uh, discussing my kind of problems, my issues with Helen, who is a teacher, she said, maybe you need to look into this, Gav. And once that diagnosis was made, it made sense of my life. If you like, my whole life came into focus. In fact, it took me a couple of months, if I'm really honest, to process The fact that had I realised this when I was younger, it would have made a massive difference to my life. My past experiences, my struggles in school, in jobs, the insomnia, the constant hyperactivity, the hyper aspects of my personality, and there are many. My driven nature, my inability to focus in meetings or listen to people, even when they're talking to my face and remember what they're even saying. Um, Yesterday, I was sat on the... Sorry, this is a bit of a confession. So yesterday I was sat on the church porch, uh, the rectory, the rectory porch at two minutes to ten going, oh, thank goodness we haven't got anything else in the diary today. Isn't that wonderful? We probably just ought to check. And Helen looked in the diary and said, you've got a funeral in 45 minutes, Gavin. In fact, you need to be down the church in half an hour. I was like, what? I can't believe I'm in You know, and uh, cause, because my brain just is, yeah. Thank goodness for Helen. She saves my life over and over. And so on. And it's something I've lived with. But, and when I told my adult children, uh, Rowena and Gemma, I said, do you know, girls, I, I think I've got ADHD. And they went, duh. <laughs> Isn't that obvious? And I was like, well, no one told me. Thank you very much. And they just laughed and said, well, yeah, obviously, Dad. Um, I was like, okay, right, thank you very much. And I don't know if this is connected, but another aspect of my personality is that I process out loud. Any other out loud processes out there? Yeah, okay. Or to be more accurate, I process by projecting my thoughts outwards. I need to express my thoughts to be able to process them, either through talking or writing. And as a child, I grew up making um, silly noises and uh, that turned into, as you know, I became a professional beatboxer, which was wonderful, discovering beatboxing, vocal percussion, and it was my outlet. Yeah, I could suddenly express myself vocally. And it was all part of that, that, that way of needing a, a, a verbal or outward expression of what I'm feeling on the inside. And so today you'll still see me in the supermarket, you know, beatboxing and stuff and making those sounds. And then I discovered writing. And really writing was my salvation in a way because uh, until I discovered it, verbal processing was the only way I could think. And when, I, and when I discovered being able to write, I could discover I could then write in my head and then spill my thoughts down on paper. And it was a, a, it was a, a, a wonderful outlet. In fact, when I write, I actually process while I'm, my thinking while I'm writing. It's, it's, it's just, I have to do that. If I, I can't just think and think something through particularly, I have to either write it or speak it to be able to think. And the point in mentioning all this is that we are often taught, and I was taught, think before you speak, Gavin. Think before you speak. Well, for someone with ADHD and who processes verbally, this was just about impossible. I mean, how could I think if I couldn't speak? Because my thinking was with my speaking, if that makes sense. And Helen is quite the opposite. She is somebody who uh, thinks then speaks. It's really frustrating. She'll, She'll think about something. When she says something, she actually means it. Because she's thought about it, and then she says, and then she speaks. She's actually thought about what she says. Whereas I am the opposite. 
<laughs> and it gets me into lots of trouble. And when I was a teenager, and people thought I was arrogant because I would argue that blue is yellow, quite vociferously. No, blue is yellow. And they think, well, that's really arrogant, Gav. And then halfway through the conversation, I would argue the opposite because I changed my mind because I'm processing verbally. You don't get it. And so it gets you into all sorts of trouble because, because I, I would say what I think, but that would only be part of the process. And by the time I got to the end of the conversation, I might be thinking something completely different, if that makes sense. Whereas when, you, when Helen says something, I have to listen because she's already thought about it. And for me, it's just the beginning of the conversation. <laughs> for her, it's already got to the end. Um, yeah, let's not go any further down that road. <laughs> now, James in the Bible teaches about taming the tongue. And this whole section under chapter 3 obviously has specific or uh, significance for me as a, somebody who talks rather a lot and talks over other people and finishes everyone's sentences before they've got time to finish them. And over time, I suppose, over time, and understanding that I do this was, was a great help. Because rather than blurt, which means think out loud, when you blurt something, that means you just speak before thinking, when you blurt, I learned not to say anything at all. And also to how to be an active listener. And actually doing some active listening training was really helpful. If you don't know what active listening is, it's where you don't say anything and you let the other person say something and you listen to them and you, and you repeat back to them what they have said to you. You repeat back to them what they've said to you and that lets them know that you have heard them. It's called active listening. You should try it. If, you are, if you've got a friend you struggle with, or you're a partner, or you're married and, yeah, and they go, you never listen to me. Try some active listening. It really works. You, and as somebody with ADHD or with a processing kind of uh, verbal processing disorder, it forced me to listen because amount of times, sorry Helen, but Helen would say something and I just can't, I, and I can't multitask either. So if I'm doing something, I just cannot listen. But it forces me to go, oh, she's speaking. I better listen. And then she'll say something. I say, so what you just said was, and the amount of times I can't remember at all and I have to guess, but I say... <laughs> And what you just said was, and you'll repeat it back to her. And she goes, and she feels validated and listened to. And so there were some tools that I learned. One was just stop, don't say anything at all. Um, and the other one was some active listening. And so for me, taming the tongue in the first instance is about making that conscious decision through repeated practice to control what comes out of my mouth. It, was a, sorry, this is a slight aside, was I used to say things like, you know, in between, or er, uh, between every word when I was learning to preach. I would be, you know, like, uh, you know, and I would be talking, you know, and say, you know, or I would say, er, uh, between everything, um, and here we are. Um, and, and again, learning to, 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 yeah, to physically stop myself doing that. And Realising that when you're doing a preaching, pauses are okay. Without saying er uh, or um, things like that. But it was, so it's that repeated practice of learning to tame my tongue and to control what comes out of my mouth. And if you know me, <laughs> most of you do, it's, I'm still a work in progress, thank God. <laughs> so forgive me. You'll know that <laughs> if I don't hear you or um, just, be, just go easy on me. Or just say, Gav, you're not listening. Like, okay. Now, there is something very important, isn't there, about having control over the things that we say. Making that conscious decision when and how to speak. However, James in his book is alluding to a much deeper issue. And that is about where the thoughts come from in the first place. Yes, it's okay for me to control my thought, uh, to control what I say, the thoughts pop into my head and I go, oh, I want to say that, but I'm not going to. Well, having that control, having that filter, if you will, or learning to have that filter. But James is, like I said, alluding to a much deeper issue. Where do the thoughts come in the, from in the first place? And the clue is in the final verses of the section where he talks about taming the tongue. Right at the end, he says, brothers and sisters, you know this isn't, this isn't right. You, you know this isn't right. You can't bless and curse in the same sentence. And, and he uses these words. Does a spring deliver both fresh and salt water? 
It's a rhetorical question, isn't it? No. My friends, does a fig tree produce olives? Does a grapevine yield figs? No. He's talking about the well or the source, the thoughts that you have in the first place. Not just about taming the tongue and having that control, which is important, but this deeper thing of where the thoughts come in the first place. You see, the very place from where our thoughts come from can be shaped and moulded, transforming our very characters, who we are. And this has a knock-on effect, a positive knock-on effect, on how and when we speak what we say. For what we say and how we say it is a direct reflection of our spirituality, what's in our hearts. You may have heard the expression, you shall know them by their fruits. And that's a direct quote from Matthew 7, verse 16. In this case, the fruit is what and how we speak. For example, if your characters, if you are a fig tree... Your words are your fruit. And if you like, it makes it very obvious what kind of tree you are by your fruit. In other words, we know exactly what kind of tree you are by what you say, what your character is like by what you say, when you say it, and how you say it. And I can guarantee your friends and family already know what kind of tree you are. <laughs> Uh-oh. Because we can't hide it, can we? We can't hide it. The way we speak matters. Now, there's no doubt this is why Paul describes the beneficial effects of being filled with the Holy Spirit. And he describes those kind of the benefits as fruits. Here we are, got fruits again. The fruits of the Holy Spirit. Who wouldn't of us want to be or have more joy? More love, more peace, more generosity, more kindness, more goodness, more faithfulness, more gentleness and self-control. They are the fruits of the Holy Spirit. So the answer is to plug into God, to invite the Holy Spirit to fill us and be open to the Spirit's leading and direction. Preachers like me, and you'll hear it if you listen to 102 on the radio and Moody Radio, they're always saying, you need to be rooted in the Word, you need to be rooted in the Bible, and they go on and bang on about being rooted in the Word. Now, yeah, absolutely, we need to read our Bibles and, 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 and kind of immerse ourselves in the Bible. But, 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 reading the Bible doesn't change you, you know that? It might remind you, it might help with the first bit of taming the tongue, it might help remind you to have that filter on, but it doesn't change you from the inside. The Bible doesn't change you from the inside out. The Bible doesn't change the thoughts in the first place. No, that is the power and the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. What really changes you from the inside out is the presence of God's Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus in our lives. That's the living word with a capital W. You see, who you hang out with influences who you become. We're designed as human beings, aren't we? As far as our genetics allow to affect each other. We're designed to affect each other, to influence each other. We learn behaviours and model our thoughts and emotions on who we witness. Quite often our parents or our closest friends, our family, shape, have a big influence on who we become. Because we model our, we learn behaviour, we learn how to express our emotions, we learn how to speak, and quite often sometimes how to think. Our teachers have a big influence on us. Our classmates do when we're at school. Ever heard the phrase, well, they're a bad influence? Yeah? yeah. Has anybody ever, be, has ever been said about you that you're a bad influence? No, of course not. Yeah. It's always somebody else who's the bad influence, right? <laughs> we're never the bad influence. Well, it makes no difference whether you are seven years old or 77 years old you are still influenced by those you hang out with. That's the truth. Therefore, it makes perfect sense to hang out with who? Begins with J, ends with S? Jesus. There you go. It makes perfect sense, doesn't it, to hang out? If we're influenced by who we hang out with, then you need to hang out with Jesus. Now, there's a new name for my Royal Gazette column, isn't it? Hanging out with Jesus. Maybe we should call it that. You see, you can be filled with the spirit of Jesus at any time and in any place, on any occasion. And when the Holy Spirit fills you, you become changed from the inside out. This is why it's called the power of the Holy Spirit, the power to transform. Nothing else can change your character. 
other than being with Jesus. That changes you. The Spirit of Jesus, who is all those things of love, joy, patience, kindness, generosity, self-control. They're the qualities that Jesus has. So when Jesus hangs out with you and you hang out with Jesus, that changes you from the inside out. Paul puts it like this in his letter to the church in Corinth. It's 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18, if you want to know. He says this, And all of us, talking about us Christians, are being transformed from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. In other words, the Holy Trans- Spirit transforms us from glory to glory. We become changed and transformed from the inside out to be more like Jesus. And of course, the knock-on effect is it changes how we, how we think. And of course, if it changes how we think those thoughts in the first place, it changes how we speak, what we say, how we say it, and when we say it. Becoming a better Christian is not an arduous work, but the result of simply spending time hanging out with the biggest influencer of all time. The longer you spend with God, the more you change from the inside out, and the more you become like Jesus. Taming the tongue, yeah, we might have to do a bit of filtering. But you're going to be struggling your entire life if that's all you do. Because you're not, you're not going to be changing the thoughts in the first place. Hang out with Jesus. And that's my prayer for you today. My prayer for us as a community. And St. Mark's is one of the most transformationally, uh, tra- transformed group of people I've ever met. Because I see it in you and I see it every day. How you are becoming more Christ-like and more loving and more generous and more supportive and more encouraging to each other. And my prayer is to just keep doing that. Amen. Keep being filled with the Holy Spirit. Keep asking the Spirit. Keep listening to God. Keep sensing God. Keep tuning in and become the people God has created you to be. Amen.